Hi, I'm Bacon, and this is my TARDIS. The whole process of building a TARDIS began with some research. For this project, I've used Steve Ramsey's Woodworking for Mere Mortals TARDIS Building Instructions as a baseline, and pretty much just modify as I went. Please note that I'm in no way, shape or form an expert in any of the skills required to properly build a TARDIS or what I could it, but that didn't stop me from trying, did it? The first thing I did was scale the dimensions to a more sensible size. Not that this case turned out small by any stretch of imagination, but a 2 meter TARDIS seemed a little excessive for the time being. After the scaling was done, I went and got myself 5 pieces of large styrofoam, did a mock-up of the inside layout, and made sure everything would fit. For this build, I've cannibalized an old ITX case I found online, and used a Dremel to cut out every excess I didn't need. Since I cannot plan ahead, I lost all the footage for that, so you gotta take my word for it. Once I had measured everything, and with the motherboard tray in hand, I went out and got the, all the pieces of wood I would need for this build. For the outside, I've used plywood sheets and glued the wood pieces to it. After I had all the four sides done, I've started to build the inside frame that consists of a single board of plywood cut with a 45 degree saw and some screws to secure it in place. It basically looks like the first step of a stairway. I've attached the two side walls to it and measured where I wanted to place the radiators. At this point, I had to disassemble both doors and ask a friend to cut the radiator holes with the CNC machine so they would get a tight fit. Now, it's time to reassemble the doors and get to painting them. I've tested some paint samples and settled for this blue spray paint that in my opinion is pretty close to the TARDIS blue I wanted. Once I had painted everything, I had to print and glue all the vinyl signs to it and now we're finally getting to the good part actually building a PC inside it. For the CPU, I went with the Ryzen 7 2700X paired with an ASUS X470 Pro motherboard and 32 gigs of Trident Z RGB RAM. The graphics are handled by an RTX 2080 from EVGA. For storage, I got a 512 gig NVMe drive from my old laptop and a 2TB WD Blue. And all of this is powered by a Corsair 800W power supply. Now for the water cooling parts. I'm using six Thermaltake ring fans with two 360 slim reds along with a velocity RGB block from the CPU, a vector RGB for the GPU, and a pump plus rest combo, everything from EK. For the fittings, I went with the Monsoon EV2 compression fittings and some 13mm hard tubing, acrylic. One thing to remember is that since we're building this case from scratch, it has no front I.O. So for that, I got an Arico PCIe expansion card with 7 USB 3.0 ports and just a generic power button I found on eBay. The assembly process is fairly easy and straightforward. Just remove the stock cooler from the graphics card and follow the block install instructions from EK's website. After that, just plug everything where it needs to go and start with the tube bending. I'll leave a link in the description to a live stream I did while building this PC so you can see the whole process if you want. This part took me more tries than I care to admit and I could do a whole video just discussing the mistakes I made and what I've learned in the way. But eventually I managed to do the whole loop without any leaks and without frying any components. That's the important part. A couple of things that I found out the hard way after powering up the computer. One is that not all RGB is created equal. And because I wasn't paying attention when buying the parts, my CPU block uses DRGB, which is addressable RGB standard. And for some inexplicable reason, ASUS does not provide an addressable RGB header in this motherboard that's clearly targeted at high-end systems. But I digress. To fix the snafu, I used the Arduino Uno to control the block LEDs and some double-sided tape just to secure it in place. The other one is that in order to access the I.O., I would need an I.O. door and I didn't have one. So I had to drain the whole loop, disassemble the sidewall, measure and cut the door. Seriously, if you want to make a project like this, please remember these details, because they cost you a lot of time. After all that, I had to reassemble the system, fill it again do a leak test overnight to make sure everything was fine and then drain it to put the final color, the blue one. It really, really makes it pop. 
On to performance now, as expected, she's a beast. And with 8 cores and 16 threads, she can handle some pretty serious multi-threaded workloads. Editing this 1080p video on it was without any hiccups, and even after color grading and applying transitions to the timeline, the performance stayed very smooth. I know that because this is not the first video. Let me know down in the comments what kind of performance test do you guys want to see. Right now, I'm running a 4.15 overclock on all cores on the CPU, and I'm planning on overclocking the GPU later. I really want to stretch her legs a bit more. Also, let me know what you think of this build and what else I did wrong, because I know I did plenty of wrong. All the resources I've used in this project are linked in the description. Thank you for watching, and remember, don't blink.